Hello everyone, this is Vipul Puroit and you're watching my YouTube channel. My dear friends, in this particular edition, I'm going to discuss the chemical properties of organometallic compounds. Previously, my dear friends, I have posted five videos on organometallic compounds, which includes introduction, the classification, and the five methods of preparation. Now, we are going to start off with the sixth part of this. If you haven't seen the previous five, no worries at all. Go to the description box of this video and you will find the links of the previous five videos. All right, so you won't miss out anything. So we begin today with the first chemical property and that is reaction with oxygen and halogen. So I give the title, it's reaction with oxygen and halogen. So my dear friends, first of all, we'll begin with oxygen and then we'll be discussing about halogen. So to start with, whenever oxygen reacts with organometallic compounds, specifically of the first main group elements first main group elements i write down in short mge then the reaction is exothermic the reason is because the reaction between these main group elements, the first main group elements I'm talking about. That means I'm talking about the alkali alkaline earth metals. I'm talking about group 13. Okay, those I'm talking about. So they are going to be pyrophobic. Pyro means it's related to heat. Now what does it mean exactly pyrophobic is? Ability to ignite instantaneously when it comes in contact with oxygen. But my dear friends, this is for who? Yes, this is for the first few main group elements. But as we move on, move on means when we go towards the right hand side of the periodic table, then the stability is achieved. And when I'm going to talk about trialkyls of group 15, and dialkyls of group 16. Why do I use these words? I'll give the clarification. Trialkyls because group 15 elements generally show a valency of 3. Dialkyls, why? Because group 16 elements generally, I use this word, generally show a valency of 2. Alright? So trialkyls of group 15 Dialkyls of group 16 do react with oxygen and that also in limited supply. It is what? Limited supply of oxygen. And also one more striking feature that you need to remember over here and that is the metal and the carbon bond is intact. It doesn't break. I'll give you some examples so you understand this very well and that is when I'm talking about MR3 plus O2 it gives you MR3O okay we have an atomic oxygen what does this M stands for yes it is standing for arsenic it stands for antimony next thing is if I'm going to talk about MR2 plus O2 it gives you M R 2 O where M is going to be selenium and tellurium. Okay, it is going to be what? Selenium and tellurium. So this is group 16 elements. These are group 15 elements. So group 15, so I talk about trialkyl. Group 16, I talk about dialkyl. Alright, because of the changes in the valency and this reaction does take place in what? Limited supply of oxygen because there is to an extent stability being achieved. Alright, so this is my dear friends reaction of oxygen with organometallic compounds. I hope you have understood up to this very well.
Now, my dear friends, we begin with the next part, and that was halogen. Okay, we le learned about oxygen. We now go into halogens. Now, when we talk about halogens, the first thing which we need to remember, and that is going to be different than what I explained to you under oxygen, and that is there is going to be a cleavage of the metal carbon bond. Now, what do you mean by cleavage is bond breaking? If you remember when I was discussing under oxygen, I told you that when I talk about trialkyls and the dialkyls of group 15 and 16 respectively, then the metal carbon bond is intact. But here, there is a cleavage, there is a breaking of the bond. And the extent to which the cleavage takes place entirely depends on the electropositive character of this M. In simple words, I'll tell you, and that is, they are directly proportional. That means greater the electropositivity of the metal, greater is going to be the cleavage of the metal carbon bond. So here we start now with certain examples, so you understand this very well. So we start with the first uh, alkali metal. Okay, and in that I gave you the example of lithium. Alright, so we start with the organometallic compound including lithium. So we have Li and I'm going to write down as R, which is an alkyl group. And because alkali metal has a valency of 1, so that means there is only one R associated with lithium. Alright, now when I'm going to treat this with halogen. So I'm writing down halogen in this way, X and X. And then, as my previous style of, when I was explaining you about the preparation of organometallic compounds, I actually show you how the bond breaking takes place and how the bond formation takes place. So before I actually write down the products, you can guess that right, what the products will be. And here we go, and that is, what we do is, the bond between X and X breaks, the bond between Li and R breaks, so we have R combining with X, and the other X combining with Li. So I guess you got it, get it right? Yes. The product has to be Li will go with X. So we have LiX and plus we have what? Rx. Right? Similarly, we have Al R3, another electropositive element, aluminium. All right, it's electropositive. So you understand that yes, there has to be a cleavage of complete bonding taking place over here and that means I'll just show it this way. And then what am I going to get is this bond breaks, okay? The AL and the R bond also breaks. The AL will go with X and I'm going to get over here AL X3 and plus of course I get RX. Now the valency of aluminium is three and therefore we say over here AL X3. Okay, it all depends upon the valency, my dear friends. Okay, so. These were the two examples where I've given you about electropositive elements where a complete cleavage of bond takes place. Okay, now I'll give you some other example. I take an example of boron. It's an element of the same group 13 of aluminium. But because boron electropositivity is less, so the cleavage of the boron and the R, that is the carbon, is less. See how it happens. I show Br3 this way, so you understand this very well. M plus I show the halogens. So as a result of it, see what happens is one of the bond only breaks between the Br and carbon. Of course, X and X bond breaks. R will go with X and the X now will form a bond with B. Right? And you guessed it right. Yes, the product has to be what now? It's R, B. Now we have an X. We have an R. So it is we had Br3, now we have got Br2x, and plus of course we have Rx. So you can see now, it's an incomplete breaking of bond. Here it was a complete breaking of the metal and the carbon bond. Here it is partial. There were total three bonds present, out of which only one breaks. The remaining two remains as it is because of the less electropositive character of boron. Right? Similarly, I'll give you some example of, uh, see this was alkali metal, this is group 13, this also boron is group 13. We go for group 14, yes I take an example of silicon, one of the most prominent element of group 14. So when I talk about silicon, valency is 4, so I will be showing 4 R groups surrounding silicon. I treat this with X and X, that is halogen, and now as usual, the bond breaking and the bond formation, X and X bond breaks, only one of the SI and the R bond is going to break. We get Rx, 
and the X is now going to form a bond with silicon and as a result of which, once again, you guessed it right, the product is going to be R, SI, R, R, and here I will be getting what? X. And plus, of course, I get what? Rx. So I had SIR4 initially, but now I'm having SIR3X. So it is an incomplete bond breaking process. That's only because of the reason is the less electropositive character of silicon. All right. So these are some of the examples which I've shown. Of course, I need to discuss further examples also. But before I do that, please have a look at it and see whether you are completely understood so far. We continue further with some of the other examples with respect to halogens and organometallic compounds. So we are going to start with the trialkyls of group 15 and dialkyls of group 16. I mentioned you in this particular video when I was talking about reactions with oxygen. Now, for these elements, when I talk about 15, so I'll talk about, say, elements like arsenic and antimony. For 16, I'll talk about selenium and tellurium. Now, these alkynes, when they are going to combine with oxygen, they undergo a reaction, and that is called as oxidative addition reaction. What is it? It's oxidative addition reaction. My dear friends, I have mentioned about this reaction when I was discussing about the preparation of organometallic compounds, especially with respect to the alkali and the alkaline earth metals. Okay, you can please go through that video which I have already posted. I guess it was organometallic part two. All right, anyways, coming back over here, when we discuss about the properties section with respect to halogens, so what is it that we need to talk about is? oxidative addition reaction all right so how it is going to be i'll show you over here and that is let us talk about mr3 you understand this is trial kind so obviously it has to be a group 15 when it is going to combine with x2 the reaction that the proceeds like this mr3 and x2 okay so see what happens over here is number one is the oxidation stain of m is increasing Okay, because a negative halogen is going inside and it's forming a bond with M. So obviously the positive charge on the M will increase. So that is oxidation. Also, here you can check it out. Two species are combining, resulting in the formation of a single product. And that reaction is called as an addition reaction. And therefore, I call this as what? Oxidative addition reaction. Similarly, if I'm going to talk about M R2, so this is a dialkyl, so it's obviously we are talking about group 16, elements like selenium and tellurium, oxygen and sulfur are quite electronegative, and when you talk about polonium, it's going to be radioactive, so we are going to ignore those elements, so we are going to take selenium and tellurium, they combine with X2, and once again, it results in the formation of uh, addition product, okay, so the oxidation state of M increases, and at the same time, what happens is it's an addition reaction because it results in the formation of a single product. But here, my dear friends, I want to make a mention of one specific case. And that is when I'm talking about trialkyl of bismuth. Yes, my dear friends, bismuth. It's an element of group 15. It is an element which comes immediately after antimony. But still, it behaves in a different manner, and that is because the trialkyl of bismuth will prefer cleavage of bond rather than undergoing addition reaction. The reason for this is the electropositive character of bismuth is greater as compared to that of arsenic and antimony. All right. So the reaction that can be given over here is we have Bi. I showed it this way so that you understand this very well as far as the bond formation and bond breaking is concerned. And then we talk about X2. And now, as usual, I'll be showing the bond formation and bond breaking. So the bond between X and X breaks. Okay, the bond between the VI and the R breaks. So R is going to combine with X and the another X is going to combine with bismuth. And as a result of which, yes, you got it right. The 
product that we get is R B I R and here I get what X plus R X. Alright? So this is something which we call it as an incomplete bond breaking reaction, but then still it's not addition reaction. Why it's not preferring that? Because comparatively, okay, that means with respect to selenium and tellurium, okay, we I'm sorry, arsenic and antimony, it's bismuth electropositive character is high. Okay, so because of the greater electropositivity as compared to arsenic and antimony, though bismuth is an element of group 15, but it prefers cleavage over the addition reaction. And this is what the reaction is all about. Okay, so my dear friends, I've discussed about the first chemical property and that is reaction with oxygen and halogen. And I'm very sure you have all understood this very well.